welcome to the channel let's move on to the next numerical a three phase pi ma 6.6 kv alternator with the reactance of 8 percentage which is connected to a feeder of series impedance of 0.12 plus j.048 ohm per phase per kilometer <coughs> so here it is in terms of ohms per phase per kilometer and there is a transformer which is a rated of uh, 3 mva 6.6 kv bar 33 kv and there is a reactance of 5 percentage we have to determine okay the fault current which is supplied by the generator operating under no load with a voltage of 6.9 kv okay so this changes you need to be very careful because it is working at 6.6 but there is a change voltage of 6.9 kv <clears throat> so there is a fault of three phase which is going to occurs at 15 km along the feeder so this is not an 1.5 this is supposed to be a 15 kv okay then this is a single run diagram we have so first and the primary most thing we have to calculate is we have to consider the base band so you have to remember here that in this chapter we have to consider highest ma rating that's why what is the ma base of the generator and the transformer so generator is 5 mva and transformer is of 3 mva okay we'll go for generator and there is a voltage of 6.6 kv okay so what is the voltage on the generator side is 6.6 kv okay then we have to calculate what is the voltage on the transmission line side okay the transformer rating is of 6.6 and 33 so this is also 6.6 okay and 33 okay so we know that what is the voltage on the high voltage transmission line is equal to low voltage of the transformer in uh, sorry low voltage of the base okay this is 6.6 into high voltage rating of the transformer divided by low voltage rating of the transformer so 6.6 33 divided by 6.6 will get 33 okay so new value is also will become the 33 Okay, the 33 kV on the transmission line side. So these are the new values. Okay, this is new value. This is word value. Okay, next we have to draw a reactance diagram. So before that we have to calculate what is the reactance of generator, transformer, and the transmission line. Okay, so reactance of generator we have the formula that. Okay, X P U nu is equal to X P U volt into K V. Sorry, M E base nu by volt into K V base square volt by nu square. So here we are not going with it because uh, what is the voltage? Okay, uh, and the M E rating. This also five M E and nu M E is also five M E. What is the voltage? Volt value and nu values are the same. So everything is going to be cancelled with each other. So we'll get. Uh, 8 percent directly, so hence it is J point J right for it. Okay, or else if you want, you can write the equation and go for it. Okay, then next come into the transformer. Okay, the formula we know that. Okay, X P new volt is equal to X X T uh, volt into M A base new by volt. Okay, M A base value K V base square volt by K V base square new value. Okay, what is the reactance of the transformer? Is a five percent is so hence point zero five. M A base new value is five M A because is given. Okay, for the old value of the transformer, it is three M A. Okay, this is three M A. And coming to that, what is the voltage on the transmission line? We are considering this is the old value. This is the new value. Okay, thirty three by thirty three square. Hence, it is point eight three three per unit. You will get. Okay, coming to that, the feeder. Okay. Or the transmission line, what we have. 
So this is the equation is important. It is not same as the generator and the transformer. ZTL transmission line per rate is equal to ZTL in ohm MEA base okay, divided by KV base square. So what is the impedance of the transmission line? It is given 0.12 plus J.48. Okay, J.48 multiplied by 15. Why it is 15? Because uh, it is 15 kilometer length. Okay, what is the MEA? It is 5 MEA. What is the voltage on the feeder? You have to see here this is 33 33 square of this value you will get 0.0083 plus j.033 per unit then we have to draw the free fault impedance diagram this is subject to the generator reactance what we got okay and for this is a transformer this is the value and the feeder there is a fault at this point okay and uh, this is the vpf we have to calculate so you have to notice here one thing okay what is that so in the previous problem if there is a fault at this point okay they were supposed to give there is a change in the voltage across this point okay let's i will give an example that so if this is working at 33 if there is an voltage which is going to change us okay then there is a change the voltage will become it may be greater than 33 or less than that okay let's give an example that consider a 35 or 36 but you have to see to that here in this problem he has not given that there is a change in the terminal voltage across the fault in place of the feeder there is a change in the voltage across the generator what was the change the voltage across generator e is 6.9 kV okay this is something is different okay this is 6.9 kv don't make it confusion between these things okay so this is something different this is 6.9 kv so what you have to do we have to convert this the actual value and the base value we will get the per unit value transfer this into the feeder side okay means we will get in terms of the parod value transfer this parod value to the secondary side of the transformer or the feeder multiply with respect to that parod value to the what is the voltage we have so we will get actual value of the fault because we have to calculate vpf where is the vpf actually there is a fault at the feeder point so this is quite difference okay then from this we can able to calculate what is ZTH. There is no problem with go with the ZTH because this generator, transformer, and the feeder, everything is connected in series. By making this voltage source is short circuited. Okay, ZTH. By adding up all things, we will get 0 0.083 plus 1049 So what I what is the steps I explained? Okay, you can see here we have to find EG and the VPF. Okay. So I told you no actual value is given it is 6.9 we have to calculate in terms of per rate actual value by base value actual value 6.9 the base value 6.6 how you got this at the initial while selecting the base value this is subjected to generator you have to keep it in the mind okay so I'll get 1.045 per unit okay so we know that the per rate can be applied to the either primary and secondary side of the transformer is it so same concept which you are going to consider that the pre fault voltage at the fault point is the voltage under no load how i got this 34.5 okay so this is nothing but what is the voltage on the distribution side that's nothing feeder is 33 multiply with respect to this is the per rate value 1.0455 so this is 34.5 kv this is what we got okay so this is the value of 34.5 how do you got this value okay this is something different okay then we know that the formula vpf to calculate that actual value by base value actual value is how much how you got this because multiplying this 1.045 34.5 the base value on the feeder side is 33 
so you'll get 1.045 you can see here this is the equation okay this one and this one so this is subjected to primary side this is referred to secondary side so from this we can once again prove can prove that the power unit can be applied for the either side of the transformer of it okay then to calculate forward current so what is that vtv vth because through the help of the vpf we got it is 1.04590 okay so we know that um, by using thevenin circuit we can write there is a source and the impedance how we go, what is this value this is nothing but this is zth okay this is z thevenin's equivalent okay equivalent of zth okay so this is the source of voltage and zth we have to calculate if okay if okay if is equal to v by z so we know that v value 1.045 and zth also we know that you will get 5.33 angle of minus 87.5 so this is this is in terms of per unit we have to calculate the base current so where we are calculating where is the fault there is a fault across the feeder okay mea base base current is kb a base divided by root of the kv kv value okay so what is that so we will get so mea is 5a anyhow divided by root 3 into what is the voltage in the feeder because we are calculating the value of the fault current across the feeder okay what is the voltage in the feeder is 33 okay base value 33 into the power of 3 so we will get 466.25 at an angle of minus 87.5 degree amperes so you have to be very careful there that do not make any unnecessary calculation so be particular to that what he ask that value you have to calculate and execute in the examination okay let's discuss the next concept is concept of short circuit capacity of the bus let's consider that there is a three bus system one two and the three Let's assume that there is a symmetrical fault which is going to take place on the bus 1. So when there is a fault on the bus 1, the voltage of the bus which is considered as 1 per unit. Whenever there is a fault which is going to take place, the voltage of the bus which is going to reduce almost to 0. At the same time, the voltage of the other buses will sag during the short circuit of the network so normally we are interested in knowing the strength of the severity of the short circuit stress so both these objectives are met by considering that the short circuit capacity or the fault level of the bus higher the short circuit capacity on the any other bus so hence an infinite bus bar has infinite short circuit capacity and will remain in its magnitude of the pre fault voltage and the post fault current so what does this mean that so if you considering that the infinite bus it can able to transfer so any magnitude of the voltage and the any magnitude of the current we can able to trap from the infinite bus so if the fault current is measured in amperes and the system voltage in terms of volts then there is a three phase system hence the short circuit mva can be expressed as mva short circuit is equal to root 3 times of vpf into i of into the power minus 6 VPF is nothing but the pre fault voltage which is measured in line to line it is in terms of the words IF is nothing but the port post fault current in amperes in that magnitude of the bus let's consider this is the equation 1 we can write this equation 1 okay so by considering that as in normal system voltage so again redrawing that MVA short circuit will become root 3 so VPF generally consider that this is the base value okay 
into i of infinity to the power of minus 6 call this equation as 2 and also we know that the fault current is calculated okay i of is equal to v by z so this is the three phase that's why it is vb divided by root 3 in terms of amperes call this equation as 3 so substitute this equation 3 in the 2 that is nothing but i of okay in the equation 2 that is i of is equal to vb by root 3 okay divided by z okay by substituting this we will get okay vb square divided by z into minus 6 so this is nothing but we can write it as kv base square divided by z okay call this equation as the 4 okay then also we have that we know z per unit can be can, can be written as z in ohm into ma base divided by kv base square okay so this is called this equation is 5 so from the equation 4 and 5 by using these two we can calculate and read it as so mea short circuit is equal to mea base divided by z per unit so this is noted that mea base is the total three phase mea and kv base is the line to line voltage so it means that the circuit breaker what we are considering is should be capable to withstand the pre fault voltage and the post fault current so hence it is an logic to rate the breaker in terms of these two quantities means that the short circuit capacity which is account for both okay voltage means the pre fault voltage and the post value of the current rather than the short circuit current so this equation is very important so we are going to use it for many calculations to calculate the value of the short circuit this is the another kind of the numerical we have a two generating stations which is supply a feeder through a bus which is shown in the figure okay this is generator g1 and the generator g2 and there is additional power which is fed to the bus through a transformer from a large system okay with the help of t2 we can consider that there is an infinite bus which is connected at this point okay so there is a reactor which is x which is included between the transformer and the bus okay transformer this is a transformer and the bus to limit the short circuit rupturing capacity of the feeder circuit breaker b okay this is the b short circuit breaker b to 333.3 mva okay so find the inductive reactance of the reactor which is required okay we have to calculate the x value the system data are given like this okay g1 is 25 mea 15 per reactance g2 50 mea 20 per reactance transformer 100 okay 8 percent reactance t2 40 mea 10 per reactance so he has given that assume that all the reactances are given on appropriate voltage basis choose a base of 100 mb so that's how this he has given that we have to consider on the base of 100 mba and we have to note down here he has not given what is the value of the voltage across the generator generator 2 and the transformer whatever the thing so the equation is the remains the same but we are not going considering we are not going to consider the voltages so what will happen okay let's show this given based on this we have to consider mea base is 100 mba so here there is no question of considering the base voltage because it is not subjected to the consider of the voltage okay so we have to calculate g1 g2 transformer t1 and the t2 okay let's calculate one by one so we know that xp xp nu is equal to xpu nu is equal to xpu volt into mea base new value divided by volt okay mea base volt value so there is no question of the voltage so we are neglecting that voltage part okay so considering that generator g1 it is a 
15% reactants okay with this so we can write it as 0.15 mea base is 100 okay world value is 25 okay you can here you can see to that 25 mea similarly for the generator g2 okay this is 20% reactants which is given here okay mea base new is 100 this is the same for the entire system okay what is the world value okay 50 so similarly for the transformer t1 so for the transformer t2 okay it is 0 0.08 because it is 8 percent is 100 by 100 okay so i'll get 0 0.08 transformer t2 okay transformer t2 so it is a 10 percent is 0 0.1 100 by 140 you will get a 0 0.25 okay okay sorry there is a mistake here it is not supposed to be 140 this is only 40 okay this is not 140 okay this is 40 okay we will get a 0.25 per unit so we have to draw the rate as diagram so this is subject to generator 1 and the 2 this is the reactance which is required this is the infinite bus what means the transformer t2 which is connected through with the help of infinite bus this is a transformer t1 there is a fault so we can wonder that how why it is there is a source of emf because we are considering that the infinite bus system which is connected to a, this system means across this bus so we are considering that okay then so this generator g1 and g2 are connected in parallel okay means this okay this and these are connected in parallel okay parallel and this and this is connected in series okay whatever the values we have parallel okay again which is going to connect in parallel to the x and 0.25 so this and this are connected in parallel you will get the value these connected these two are connected in series whatever the effective value which is coming in parallel again it is going to be connected in parallel to this network because there is a source of emf at this point okay we will get there is a single line and the value of the point zero eight is connected in series okay let's see that i have written a sentence here just you can go through that so this 0.24 we got that it is 0.6 and 0.4 are connected in parallel so you'll get this so x plus 0.25 this is connected in series okay again this value and this value are connected in parallel okay means you can see here 0.24 and x 0.25 so this is value is connected in parallel and which is in series with the 0.08 okay in series with the 0.08 so after doing the simplification we will get the equation 0.2x 0.32x plus 0.0992 divided by x plus 0.049 all this equation is 1 we know that the equation MEA short circuit is equal to MEA base divided by Z per unit. So MEA base is 100. What we got? Z per unit values. This is the equation. Okay. This is denominator. This term is go to numerator. Okay. We are directly we are simplifying that. Okay. And also we know that it is given the short circuit MEA of the circuit breaker is 333 MEA. Okay. Means MEA short circuit will become. 333 so substitute this 333 value you will get x is equal to 2.4 per unit after doing simplification all these things okay hence this is the value of the inductive reactance this is nothing but j 2.4 this is nothing but j 2.4 times the value of which is connected between the transformer and the bus which is required to limit the short circuit rupturing capacity of the feeder across the B to limit that 333 MVA. So this is the unique problem we have.